Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer, in that order. Welcome everyone, story time today from the files of Adventures in Card Dealing. This is the story of a purchase I made that included a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. And, and while it's not the largest deal I ever made or the, the, you know, the most expensive or most profitable by any means, uh, it is sort of the deal that maybe is the most important to me in, in this, the sense that it's the deal where I felt like I had arrived. It's, you know, before this I was doing my thing, doing fine. But, you know, after this deal, I sort of felt like, you know, I, I'm in the I'm in the big leagues now. And it's purely an internal, internal feeling thing. But it's like a light bulb went off in my head. You know, I'm not, I'm not just dabbling in sports cards here. I'm I'm a legit player and I'm, I'm, I'm making uh, making a real living doing it. And uh, that was a very, you know, cool feeling and, and sort of a nice transition in, in that moment. Uh, I have the financials, which I'll share at the end, and, and they were quite good. But, you know, we bought this in 2015 and sold it in 2016. And Looking at uh, you know some of the prices then versus the values today is a, a bit cringeworthy, but uh, you know I'm I'm not complaining. So it was December of 2015. I was working with Jeremy Donson, who I've mentioned a number of times before. He was my my go-to partner for many higher dollar deals, and and we're still very tight today. Our agreement on most deals was he pays for the deal, I do all the work selling it. He gets paid back in full off the top, and then any profit after that we we split 50-50. And and this was our agreement on this deal as well. We posted a number of ads in Palm Springs, California that we were actively buying sports card collections and we rented out like a bar area and a hotel to meet with people on a Saturday. The hotel was happy to rent out the bar as uh, you know this was going to be during the morning and the early afternoon when they didn't have a lot of customers and you know we, we promised to, to order food as well. Uh, I was living in LA and Jeremy in Arizona so we got up real early and drove out to Palm Springs, but much longer drive for Jeremy than me. Before we went to the hotel, we actually went to someone's house who had answered our ad, and uh, his collection was too big for him to take to the hotel. That was actually a pretty interesting story in its own right, but uh, in short, we, we didn't buy that one, and we headed to the hotel. I'll, I'll, I'll save that story for uh, another video. Uh, at, the, at the hotel, we met with something like five different people, and four of them were complete busts. Of, the, of those four, we, we only bought something from one person, uh, seventy dollars worth of pennants, which which were not worth a lot more than seventy dollars, and they're a major pain to sell online. Very, very difficult to ship. Probably shouldn't have even bought them. But the fifth guy we met with was obviously a big one. He was a, a gentleman, maybe fifty or so, very very friendly and outgoing. He had with him two items. First was a 1953 Bowman Color partial set. It was ungraded, but but solid mid grade. I was missing a bunch of the stars, but it did have the mantle, and the mantle was very sharp. And the other item he had with him was a 1952 Topps Baseball near set. A complete 52 Topps set has 407 cards. He was missing something like 50 cards. Uh, one of the cards missing was the Eddie Matthews, which, which is a big one, but he basically had every other key card. Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson, a bunch of high numbers, and, and most importantly, Mickey Mantle. Also ungraded, it was a lower mid-grade, or maybe a better way to say it is it was mixed grade. The majority was lower grade, maybe in the two to three range, but there were some mid-grade cards and, and even some higher grade cards scattered in. The pictures you see here are some of the uh, actual cards from the deal. The cards were loose in a shoebox, not protected very well, certainly not in any sort of card holders of any kind, but the guy more or less knew what he had and he had given us a heads up that there was a 1952 Topps mantle as, a, as, part of the, as part of the deal. I start going through the collection trying to figure out, you know, what we can pay for this deal, do, doing my calculations. When I get to the mantle, I actually get sort of nervous or, you know, maybe uncomfortable is a better way to say it. I had never held a 52 mantle before, and not only am I holding one for the first time, I'm, I'm holding it raw. It's, it's not even in a penny sleeve. For those unaware, this is probably the most forged card in history. I I'd held plenty of 52 tops cards before, but but never a mantle, so I just couldn't be 100% sure that it, that it was good. It, it certainly seemed good, but the, the 52 mantle fakes are famous for being very hard to detect and at this point I was I was not an expert on that. Fake or not, it was lower grade and ha had a small crease and was off center, probably in the 2 to 2.5 range if graded by PSA. The guy seemed on the up and up, you know, like I said, very friendly and given that this was part of a, a, a near set and, and he had a story about how he had put the set together himself way back in the day, you know, every, everything seemed to check out but I just uh, I just couldn't be sure. We ask him how much he wants for everything, and he says, "No, you, you know, you're gonna. I'm not gonna give you that. You're gonna have to make the first offer." But he said to be aware that he has another offer on the table already that he's considering. We we ask him how much that offers for, and he says, "No, no, he's not not willing to share that information." So he knows what he's doing negotiation wise. Most likely, the claim that he has another offer already is a bluff. That's usually the case in a situation like this. But 
you never know. And he, he's basically in the driver's seat, so we, we have to play ball. We ask him if we could have a few moments alone, and he says no problem. And he steps outside while, while Jeremy and I discuss you know, what, what we can offer. I tell Jeremy that I think conservatively there's twenty five to thirty thousand dollars worth of cards here, but there's a couple of things to consider about that. First of all, this is going to come with a bunch of additional grading costs, you know, thousands of dollars. The mantle alone is going to cost seven hundred dollars to to send a PSA, and uh, second is I'm assuming the mantle is going to grade a PSA two or a two point five. But you know, I was pretty confident about that. But but again, you never know, and, and that's a obviously a major swing if I'm wrong. Uh, at the time, in 2015, the mantle in a PSA 2 holder was a, about a $10,000 card, so I was valuing it as such. And I made it very clear to Jeremy that while you know I was pretty sure that the mantle was good, there was definitely a chance that it wasn't, so we, we had to consider that risk. So we decided to offer $10,000 and just and see what happens. Uh, if you consider projected PSA fees, that's about 50% of the value of, of what I had estimated it at. And, uh, and again, we had to you know consider the risk that the mantle wasn't good. Today, I would actually offer a much higher percentage on a deal like this, but, but that's because I'm far more confident in how it's, uh, how it's going to play out. The gentleman comes back in. J Jeremy is the negotiator, and he offers the $10,000. The guy did not look too happy with that, and he says, you know, look, I, I have an offer on the table for $15,000. I, I wouldn't consider anything less than that. But if you guys want to come up to $15,000 and you have cash on you right, right here and now, it, it's yours for, for fifteen k. Jeremy looks at me and he can tell I'm not overly comfortable with that number, so he goes into his negotiation mode, which he is very good at, and, you know, hey, we're at 10, you know, you're at 15, why, why don't we come up to 12 and, and call it a day? But the guy holds pretty firm, and after a few minutes of back and forth, he does come down to 14,000, but it's very clear he's not going to budge any more than that, so uh, we again ask him if we could have a couple minutes alone, he, he again says no problem, and he, he steps outside. And uh, Jeremy asked me what I think, and I say, you know, assuming the mantle is good, 14K will, will really be a great buy, but if it's not good, we'll, we'll make very little money or maybe even, you know, break even. Now, breaking even might not sound that bad as like a worst case scenario, but when you're a full-time dealer and you, you pay your bills, you know, doing this, you can't afford to spend weeks on a deal and see no profit from it. That's basically the equivalent of, of missing a, a paycheck from a standard standard job. Not to mention uh, Jeremy's money being tied up for, for many months. But Jeremy and I agree that it's a go. It's a, it's a risk worth taking. The man comes back in and we, we tell him it's a deal and, and shake on it. Jeremy had the money on him, so he, he counts out $14,000 worth of $100 bills and, and hands it to the guy. And he, he's now in a great mood. He's clearly very happy with the deal. And he, he even buys us a round of drinks and uh, sticks around. And we all, we all you know, chat for, for 20 minutes or so before he, uh, before he takes off. Jeremy and I split up. I, I, I take the cards with me back to L.A. So the first thing I want to do is confirm that the mantle is, is real. So I, I, I don't really want to be spending $700 sending it to PSA only to, to find out it's fake. So I uh, call a few of my dealer friends and ask, you know, who would be confident in determining its legitimacy. Uh, I eventually take it to Burbank Sports Cards. I know the owner, Rob, as we had done some business together, and his store was about an hour from, from where I lived. Rob met with me in the back room of his store, and I, I showed him the card. He looked at it for about 10 seconds and, and said, it, it's definitely good. Well, now I'm the one in the, in the great mood. You know, my, my first 52 mantle, but very exciting. I take a bunch of pictures of myself with the card. He, here are just a couple. And, of course, the, uh, the one with my newborn son, who was just a, a few months old at the time. One of my dealer friends called me a few days later and said he had a buyer interested in the card. I met the guy at the bank, and he offered me $13,000 cash for the, the 52 mantle on the spot. I called Jeremy in to discuss, and we decided to hold firm at... 15 grand, uh, which the guy uh, eventually agreed to. And we, we met a second time and he gave me $15,000 cash for the 52 mantle raw, which uh, really was a fantastic price. I mean, at the time, PSA 10, uh, twos, as I mentioned, were going for about 10,000 and PSA 2.5 is about 15,000. And I, I really didn't think the card had any chance getting uh, graded above a 2.5. Uh, selling it raw also meant we didn't have to pay the $700 to send it a PSA. And it also meant we didn't have to incur any eBay fees because we were, we were obviously selling for for cash. So I only owned the card for you know a week or so, but still a very very important card in my uh, personal sports card journey. I sent in around 150 cards to PSA for grading from the deal, but basically all the 52 high numbers, all the stars, and any commons that seemed you know mid grade or better. The entire deal led to 183 unique eBay listings for me. Other than the mantle and a couple other singles, I basically sold the entire deal on ebay mostly as singles although also a few lots and, and a couple starter sets some of the bigger sales were the 1952 tops willie mays which graded a 4mc 
Sold that for $810, which at the time was a strong price. Here are the sales of, uh, of PSA 4s with a qualifier around the same time as, as the one uh, that I sold. You can see $810 was a solid price for the time. Of course, that card is you know easily worth 10 times that today or, or more. The 1952 Jackie Robinson was a PSA 5. This, this one hurts to think about. Sold it for $2,800, which was actually, again, a very strong price at the time. In fact, it was the record sale of the card in that grade at the time. Today, it's around a $25,000 card. And the 1953 Bowman Mantle got a PSA 7. It was a beauty. For some reason, I don't have a picture of it, so this is just a stock photo, but I, I remember it being just, uh, just gorgeous. Sold that for $3,900. That was also the record sale for a PSA 7 at the time. It's probably about a $10,000 card or, or so today. We found out through our friend that the 52 Tops Mantle graded a PSA 2.5. The, the buyer uh, sent it in himself to PSA, which, which is not, not surprising. At the time, again, remember 2.5s were selling for right about $15,000. So the sale was uh, you know fair for the time. Today, five years later, the latest sale of a 2.5 went for over $40,000. As I mentioned in other videos before, you know you can always play the what, what would that card be worth today if I had held it game? And, you know, I, I do that sometimes for fun, like I just did here. But but the truth is, that stuff really really, really doesn't bother me at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's all part of the process. And, and especially when you're a dealer, and even more so when you're a dealer kind of in the early stages of it, you know, it's much more important to maintain a constant cash flow, you know, buy and sell for profit and move on to the next deal. I mean, at the time in 2015, Jeremy and I really couldn't afford to sit on $14,000 worth of cards. We needed to recoup that money and use it to pay bills and, 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 and buy the next deal. So it's, it's not something I ever, you know, see as a regret. You know, holding cards long term is definitely part of the process and, and part of my strategy, but you kind of have to do it uh, as, your, as your budget allows. The numbers on the deal look like this. $14,000 for the two partial sets plus $70 for those annoying pennants. We spent uh, $2,119 on ads in Palm Springs, which had the one guy not called us would have been, you know, basically just money down the drain. We rented the hotel bar area and uh, bought a bunch of food and drinks. Total cost there was $315. Also had $110 worth of gas and uh, spent $2,681 with PSA. Total all-in cost was a little over 19 grand. Sold through this deal pretty fast, as back then PSA bulk orders were only took about a month to get back to you. Sold the mantle right away, of course. All these numbers are after fees are accounted for and rounded to the nearest hundred. Uh, month one, $2,600. Month two, $8,200. Sold past the break-even mark early in month two, which is, which is great. Usually, usually would not break even that fast on a deal like this. Month three, sold $6,500. Month four, $2,700. And uh, then another $3,100 trickled in over the next few months. Total money in $38,100, which puts the total profit at $18,800. Uh, Jeremy and I uh, split that, so $9,000 plus each. I don't know how much work went into this deal for me. If I, if I had to guess, I would estimate I put in maybe two weeks of full-time work. And if you want to think of it in terms of Jeremy and I individually, I, I basically made $9,000 for two weeks of fun work. Certainly very happy with that. Jeremy made $9,000 on a $19,000 investment, almost 50% return over the course of a, a few months. He was he was plenty happy with that as well. So the deal turned out pretty great, certainly better than I had estimated in the moment. Getting $15,000 cash for the mantle was really a big a big boost. I mean, you know, I had estimated it at 10 and getting cash for it raw meant we didn't have to spend $700 to PSA and also meant we didn't have to pay eBay fees on the back end. So that was really a big, uh, you know, a big improvement over, over what I had estimated we would get. I also kept one card from the deal for my personal collection. Not, not sure why only one. I would usually keep quite a few cards from my PC, especially vintage baseball, but for whatever reason, I only kept the one card. A 1952 Tops Billy Martin Rookie PSA 6. I still have it. It's, uh, it's worth about $400 today. So that's it, the story of my first 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. I've owned uh, three of them in my life. This was the, the first, and, and as I said, sort of the most important uh, to me. As it sort of represented me, you know, getting called up to, to the majors. I was playing solid minor league ball before this, but, you know, this was uh, my, my major league debut, and, and, uh, and I performed well, and after this, I sort of was in the major leagues to stay, if you, if you buy that analogy. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. You know, please feel free to leave comments and questions below, and I'll, I'll do my, my best to answer them. Stay safe and uh, be well. Thanks, guys.